Hi folks and uh, welcome back to my shop. Uh, as you know I'm working on the P51A cockpit and I actually had a couple of requests from people uh, maybe to do a short video on how to weather uh, the cockpit items or how I weather them. Um, let me show you something that's been completed here. I don't know if you can see it but you can see how dirty and worn this has become. Uh, and that's what, what we're going to show you today, how to do that. Uh, as you see, I've got a couple of P-51 pedals here from iFly Tallies. And they look fantastic. Matter of fact, they look so fantastic, they look like they just came from the factory. So we need to make them look like they've been in Burma for a few months. So, uh, or Miramar now, whatever you want to call it. Um, so now what we need to do is uh, make them look nice and dirty and worn out. So I do this two ways. There's two elements to weathering. First is giving it that worn look and then the second is dirtying it up. Okay. So to give it the worn look what I use is a product called Rub and Buff and you can find this in any craft store like Michaels or Hobby Lobby or any place like that or you can order it online and it's available in uh, you know, silver, aluminum, um, I'm trying to remember what all is out there, copper, gold, you can get it in all, all colors. And, and what this is normally used for is if you were doing like a clay pot and you wanted to highlight the textures, you would take this and, and rub, rub it on with your fingers and uh, then come back with a cloth and remove the excess. And then it dries. Uh, let me show you kind of what it looks like. As you can see, it's just a paste. Okay, see that paste? And that's what we'll be using. Okay, the other part of this, dirtying it up, I have a wash I've made up. Now, I make these from acrylic paints, okay, because I don't want them to basically bond before it fully dries. Um, this particular mixture, I believe, is like, I'm trying to remember, I think it's like a, a leather color, a sand color, maybe a little bit of rust color, too. I use this for dirtying and using it for rust runs, too. You know how sometimes you'll get a run of rust down a piece of metal? This is great for that. And, of course, I use an, a, a, a nice artist brush. Don't go cheap on this because this does make a difference. And I use a modeler's locking set of tweezers to um, show you how this works. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. A locking set of tweezers to hold the parts while I work on them. Okay. So let's get started. <clears throat> um, a couple other things you'll need is you'll need uh, maybe some bamboo skewers or I use these little... Uh, sticks. I don't even know where I found them at. I think I found them in a craft store. Um, because basically when we wear, when we want to give something the appearance of being worn, there's a couple of things we want to replicate. One is we want to wear down the high spots. Two, we want to apply scratches and dings and flakes. Okay. So we're going to do that with the rub and buff. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do here is we're going to apply some some scratches and dings. So I just put a little bit on here. I just basically dip it in there. Just put all that extra back in there. Now you don't want a lot on here, okay, because it doesn't take much. And then we're going to take our pedal. Let me lock this in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a look of, you know, some scratches and, and so forth. And if you notice, I'm just kind of randomly doing it, but I do bunch the scratches up in an, an area here and there. Now, what I like to do sometimes, and I'm going to show you this right here on the paper, is I will just take the rub and buff and get a little, little pile of it there. Oh, that's too much. Let's just rub some off. Wipe that away. That just looks like a paint flip. And we do it some more. We just add 
You want to randomly do this. And if it looks too balanced, it doesn't look right. So you want all different sizes and you want, you know, it to look like it's actually worn. And we do that all over it. Okay. Let's smear that one a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So there, now we've got, it looks a lot more worn now. Okay. Now to, to give it the, uh, the worn look around the edges, I just take my finger. Let me show you this. And I put a little bit on it. You see that? And I just run along these edges. Just like that. It doesn't take much. Okay. And anywhere that there's a potential rub point, that's where I put it. Okay. I might even just smear a little bit softly once it's almost all gone over that. And I do the same thing on the sides. You see that? I'm just basically barely touching it. I'm not pressing down hard. And there, now we've got a worn pedal. Okay, let's do the other one real quick. And this stuff is dries pretty quick, so you don't have to really be too concerned with holding it wet. Um, let me clamp this on here. And we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to take our, our little stick here with a point on it. And we're just going to kind of give it the illusion of a lot of little scratches and dings. You can even run scratches down like that if you want to, okay? But you want to you wanna just kind of do random scratches and dings all over this to give it the proper appearance, okay? And you can overdo it, so be careful. If you think you've got enough, you probably do, okay? Now we're going to do the next step, which is like we did before. We're going to put a little bit on the finger. I rub the excess off, and I kind of run that along the edges here. To give it that appearance of being worn. I do it on the sides. It's kind of hard to hold in this level, let's say. There we go. Put a little bit more on there. Yeah, we'll put it down there and do it. There we go. There, so now you can see it's starting to raise up a little bit. Okay? So that's really it. That's, that's how you use the rubbing buff. Okay, next on the list, let me get a paper towel here. Is we want to make them look dirty and, and used. Now, one thing I notice a lot when people are doing this is they tend to overdo it. If you can see the dirt from more than about a foot or two, uh, two feet, two or three feet away, you've overdone it. Okay? Because what you're trying to achieve here is an overall effect of you know, just a, a, a mild color change that's not consistent, okay? So we shake up our paint, and we take one of our petals. Let me click it down here. Okay, so I get some paint on my brush, and then I kind of dab it. I'll do it here. I'll dab it on the paper to get the excess off, okay? And then all I'm going to do is just brush down. And as you can see, it's giving it a real light brown tone, okay? Same here. Now, this looks shiny, but once it dries, it'll be dead flat because I use dead flat colors, acrylic colors. But that's not really even going to matter because we're going we're gonna to spray them with... Uh, a dead flat clear to lock the paint the paint and weather in. Same thing, we take the next petal. And if you notice, they're getting that kind of correct 
color of, of worn and, and brown to just make them look a little dirty, okay? So now here's the great part about this. So you see all that excess there? You can just brush that away. And then uh, if you don't like it, just grab a paper towel and, and wipe it off. Okay, so let's put that one down. And that's really it. So what I do now is I let it dry. And once it's dry, and it doesn't take real long to dry, this stuff dries in you know, 10, 15 minutes. Um, I actually take some Model Masters Lusterless Flat Clear and spray them. So, so let's let these dry a little bit, and when, when they dry, I'll come back and we'll give them a quick spray. We'll be right back. Okay, folks, we're back, and our, um, our wash is dried. And so now what we want to do, you hear me shaking up the rattle can of uh, Model Master's Lusterless Flat Clear. Now what we want to do is we just want to apply a couple of thin coats over it because all we want to do is we want to lock all this in place. So if you run your finger over it, it's not going to um, come off. So I just, a couple of light coats, build it up just a little bit. And just, we'll let that sit. And when it dries, we'll flip them over and do the back side. Be right back. Okay, folks, and we're back, so we're going to flip these over. Looks like the back sides are still a little wet on one side. We'll just wipe that excess away. There it goes, it's dry. And same thing, we just give it a light, a light coat. Okay, we'll be back as soon as that dries. Stay tuned. Okay, folks, we're back. Um, that kind of wraps it up. That's how I do my uh, weathering. Um, so to recap briefly, we use rub and buff to simulate wear and flakes and cracks and scratches. And we use a water-based acrylic uh, wash to simulate dirt and then last but not least we give it a nice coat of clear dead flat and uh, I guess that's going to wrap it up the one thing I'd like to say about doing details like this um, you have to kind of weigh what's the most important to you because you can make a 100% replica of any aircraft's cockpit with enough work but is your goal to, to fly and enjoy that airplane, or is it to replicate it like a museum piece? Either way is perfectly fine, but you need to think about that. And you make allowances either ways. Uh, so if you tend to do more of a museum piece, that's probably not going to be a, a, a plane that you fly often, if any. Whereas a plane you want to enjoy and fly you may have to make allowances, and that's fine. And like our friend Dave Platt says, it's all about giving the illusion, okay? So just remember that when you're doing your cockpits. Um, you want things to be as accurate as possible, but sometimes that's not possible because of either the size or the vibration or, or whatever factors you have to take into consideration. So just remember that and enjoy your modeling. Uh, if you have any questions about this, um, drop a comment down below in the video comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I appreciate you taking a look at this. I hope it was helpful. Uh, if there's something you would like to see, again, leave me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, we'll catch you next time. Take care.